Nice day, my non-bino dinos. Today we're tiptoeing toward a recently released mold of might and malevolence. So I want y'all to get on the floor and get ready to roar for Kingdom Megatron. Yes. Now we're pretty deep into this current Beast Wars revival we're living in, and you know they wouldn't have gone reigniting the hype for the Beast era without giving us a big slick new Megatron. So this right here, as I imagine most of you are aware, is based on Megatron's appearance from 1996's Beast Wars cartoon, which was the period when Transformers was reimagined showing off their wild side with animal alt modes like gorillas, cheetahs, rhinos, and, of course, dinosaurs. I'll give you one guess which one this is. Beast Wars? More like... Electric Zoo. And as I think is immediately evident, that design clearly slathered him up in a brand new, unbelievably unsubtle new outfit. I'm sure a lot of Beast Wars fans lost their minds when this tyrannical Rex was announced, since prior to this, the only non-reissue recent representation of this Megatron design came in the form of the Masterpiece toy. Which, I'm sure was good, but, you know, this toy is also good, and it costs six times less money. So take that for what it's worth. But yeah, I'm all about this big mean menace's vainglorious visuals. The purple looks super appealing and ever pleasant to my queer self. I'm really tickled that when they were redesigning Megatron for Beast Wars, rather than going with the traditional gray, they went with the most reliable Decepticon color they could, that being purple. It looks great throughout and really gives it a sense of immediacy and presence. But that is far from the only thing that's giving him presence. With these enormously long, curvy, predatory Predacon talons gripping the ground he stands on. I like how his torso area tries so hard to look reasonably sensible and robot-y and literally everything else does everything in its power to counteract that. Like this arm that would definitely be too disproportionately shrimpy and skinny on its own, but it's saved by this titanic T-Rex tail so he can punch and stab his opponents at the same time. Such efficiency. And we haven't even touched the other arm yet. Crikey, just... Yeah. I heard of biting the hand that feeds you, but this is just ridiculous. I'll go more into this in the alt mode, but let's just say that for now I absolutely love this. I like how this figure is presented a scenario where each arm is somehow simultaneously weirder than the other one. The man just straight up has no normal arms. He gave up his chance at a normal life just for the aesthetic. Was it worth it? Mmm, yep. This is far from a bad thing. This design of Megatron has become iconic at this point, and just about every version of him always has some hulking weapon of mass unsubtlety fused onto him. This is just a natural extra step in that evolution. And this is the natural step of that evolution. I appreciate the purple trees on his thighs here, and the hip discs look way less obtrusive than his original Beast Wars toy, so great job there. The only problems I have with the legs is that while the in and out movement is strong enough, the forward and back movement does sort of feel a little loose and limp. Also, it looks like he's getting to that age where his crotch just doesn't want to stay together too well. What a nightmare. Imagine what he goes through. Neither of these are huge by any means, but it's tough to look out for. Something I'm sure you've noticed by now is that he's hauling a heaping backpack of dinosaur skin kibble flaps on his back, but that does so little to detract from anything. Beast Wars Megatron has always had some leathery wing back parts in the past, so I guess this is accurate to the look. But there's no way it can deter anyone from noticing this actual personified dinosaur explosion. Moving on to the chest, I'm digging the use of the gray metallic paint and the polygonal details engraved on there. Not to mention the silver utilized on the elliptical chest vents and the faux teeth obscuring the ball jointed neck. And all that leads us to this handsome head with the impressive sculpt work throughout the helmet like bucket head. They even stuck in a little Predacon symbol on the forehead crest. And the face just looks so unamused and mean. I sort of wish they went with the 90s mega angry scowl the original Beast Wars toy is known for. But I'm still satisfied with this boy's grim Ivan Ooze frown with the pronounced bottom lip. I also enjoy the asymmetrical shoulders, like how one sort of swoops up while the other curves down. It reminds me of Yoda's ears. There's also very liberal posability here. Things get a bit whacktacular in how chunksome and unusual the hands are, but it's all workable and more than manageable. Plus, you can make him do a dino dab. I sort of wish the white they used for the knee joints was a different color since it kind of sticks out, but otherwise there's not much else to grumble about. All around, this is an ultra pleasable robot mode. It's a large, sprawling, splayed out weirdo with nothing to prove. 
And I love the character that really comes out of this. It's a robot mode with everything you can ask for in a Beast Wars Megatron. It's just delicious. Oh yes. The transformation into Dino mode works really well. I feel like a lot of people exaggerate the difficulty of transforming this toy. Like sure, it's got a lot of moving parts and there's like one instance where you need to push a little hard to plug the chest into the waist, but I wouldn't call it hard or frustrating. I feel like it's a very logical solution for getting a show accurate Megatron into a reasonable looking alt mode, and it all feels so rewarding when you end up with this big old king of the dinos and Predacons. Look at this big purple bird. I love you. You love <laughs> I should note that some parts are coated with a softer, more malleable plastic, possibly to keep certain parts from breaking too easily. It's a smart decision, but be careful not to warp it. So the Beast Era reimagined the big old Decepticon leader from a lawsuit magnet gun mode into easily the fiercest looking creature they could have come up with to rival Optimus's newfound gorilla form. Cause, you know, gorillas and dinosaurs. Natural enemies. It's like cats and dogs. Or bats and clowns. But come on, would you want Megatron to be anything else for Beast Wars? Would anything suit him more? I think not. But, uh, yeah. This is, uh, <laughs> pretty awesome. This is far more impressive and marvelous than I could have imagined. It's as perfect a Beast War style leader class Megatron can possibly get in my eyes. It's just so good on so many levels. Firstly, it looks great, obviously, with the really smart and carefully considered skin detailing giving it a rough, folded, leathery texture. And that's throughout all the dinosaur. It's absolutely wild how hard the sculpting goes. And the T-Rex head unambiguously dominates. Everything looks so appealing and deliberate here with the sculpt, and he's sporting some orangey red eyes. Also, in case you were worried, his mouth can open and bellow a mighty roar. <laughs> Love the painted teeth and the detail on the inside of the mouth. That's, uh, not something you see every day. This mode actually sports a really healthy amount of articulation as well as the legs being able to kick forward and back, as well as allowing the tail to have some movement. The tiny T-Rex arms are on ball joints, and the head is able to serve all kinds of movement with the articulated neck. That's just too much. It's just powerful. Now, this toy doesn't come with any accessories, however, this is the kind of toy that's so independently great that it doesn't need to bother with extras. It's wholly satisfying by itself. With that said though, if you have Leader Class Last Night Megatron, you can use the flame effects and make a fire-breathing T-Rex. Have I convinced you enough then? I think you get it by now. It's a wonderful toy. But if I may, now's as good as time as any to show off Megatron's maximal mold, mate. So get ready for T-Rex! So this is the exclusive repaint of Kingdom Megatron based on a character from the Beast Machines toy line. And you know what? Originally I had absolutely no plans on getting this figure. But let me tell you, seeing it in person, it truly is something to behold. There's just something about the combination of red, metallic blue, and even the gray that immediately worked for me. This is a beautiful looking toy through and through. Everything about the sculpting on Megatron stays great here, and the new color scheme really does do so much for this toy. I guess some might take issue with the large front gray area. However, since that is what the original Beast Machine's toy looked like, I at least see where it's coming from. The head also remains marvelous here, making true use of the red and blue scheme, and I'm loving the yellow eyes. On promo images, the head was shown with the classic angry 90s Ninja Turtle toothy grimace. However, the final toy just has the same head as Kingdom Megatron. I guess they thought the other face was too angry for a Maximal. It didn't stop him from painting where the teeth would have been. Either way, I still think it looks good enough. The legs feel a bit more sturdy than Megatron's. However, now the crotch area is too strong and it's quite difficult to split. And ripping someone's crotch in half is just not my idea of fun. But all around, for the most part, T-Rex's robot mode is still a mighty, meaty, hunkalicious dino lump of a man. The same can be said for the T-Rex, T-Rex mode. There's something about a red T-Rex that makes it look a bit more ravenous, if that makes any sense. The colors work their magic just as pleasantly here, and while it looks quite silly, a red Tyrannosaurus Rex with bluish purple markings, like the world's worst attempt at camouflage, it's still absolutely hardcore. I can't help but admire the silver teeth and the beady yellow eyes. Overall, while I do prefer Megatron, I think T-Rex makes for an overall pretty great toy and a clever use of an already astounding figure. Looking at the two, there's no way they don't rock the inherent awesome dino charm. 
They're both fantastic for what they are, and some of the strongest of the War for Cybertron trilogy. D-I-N-O-S-A, you are a dinosaur!